Hello friends and welcome to this video on Authentic English and in this video I'm going to discuss with you the objective section of the JNU MA entrance English question paper of 2019. As you all know that uh, JNU conducts its annual examination, annual entrance examination for getting into its postgraduate courses and the competition is pretty tough here. You need to clear the examination in order to get a seat and the number of seats is limited and the number of students who apply for the examination is quite large. So in order to get a seat, you not only need to work hard, but also need to work smart. And in this video, I'm going to discuss with you the objective section of uh, the JNU MA English question paper 2019. What I'm not going to do is discuss the comprehension part which will be discussed in later videos i'm going to make a separate video on them in this video i'm going to tell you some tricks that you can apply in order to guess the answers if you're in doubt see the right answer is available right in front of you you only get to uh, you only need to guess the right answer so not all the, you don't always need to relate it to the question asked but to your general knowledge of english literature okay so i'll tell you this with the uh, the examples so without wasting much time let's begin with the discussion of the questions okay now if you look at question number one what they've asked is which of the following was not published in the 1930s so this is question number one that they asked in the objective part now these are mcqs the right answer is right in front of you you only need to just pinpoint it like this is the right answer the first three works kantapura Untouchable Swami and Friends are from three great writers who established uh, English in India. Okay, who wrote in English in India. So, Kantapura by Raja Rao, Untouchable, Swami and Friends. These are all three books that uh, one can say form the very basic or the, are the pioneering books of literature in English in India. Now, you know that uh, Kantapura was written by Raja Rao, Untouchable was uh, by Mulk Rajanand, Swami and Friends by Arkinarayan. So, Mulk Rajanand and uh, Raja Rao and uh, Arkinarayan were uh, three of the pioneers who brought who or who produced rather literature in English in India. As a student of literature, it's highly recommended that you study not only the summaries of these three works, but also more details about them. And as a matter of fact, all these three works were published in the 1930s. Gandhi's book, My Experiments with Truth, was published in 1927. So, if you've studied literature in English in India, general background to it, you must be knowing that the three works can or belong to the same decade but not option number d which is my experiments with truth so the right answer is d my experiments with truth which was published in 1927 this question could have been done by any student who was good at guessing like these three works were more or less considered to be what established in english in india and all these three works were, of course, produced in the 1930s. Which of the following novels is not written in the stream of consciousness? Now, what the question setters want you to know is not a, a very fact-based knowledge, but a knowledge rather based on concepts. If you study the technique called stream of consciousness, you'll be provided with several examples which are uh, a part of it. And you see the sound and the fury, Mrs. Dalloway and Ulysses are uh, the works which are very often cited when you study this technique called stream of consciousness. So you can by these th uh, by the principle of exclusion guess like the since these three works are a part of the stream of consciousness, what is left does not belong to it. And so, which of the following novels is not written in the stream of consciousness? The Old Man and the Sea. It's that simple. 
A Vision by W.B. Yeats is a play, a novel in verse, a book of mystical philosophy, a poem. Now this is something that uh, requires, you can say, a fact-based knowledge. And uh, of course, W.B. Yeats was not just a poet, he was also a playwright. And uh, he even wrote essays in this book called A Vision is a book of philosophy book of mystical philosophy so option c here is the right answer you may get it right or may get it wrong so there is going to be some question like this which may ask you something that you are not familiar with you never read you've never read before but you can of course guess generally the option that seems to be a little different from the three in this paper is the one that is right so you can of course do some guesswork which of the following develops into Ras? Again, they want you to have understood a concept well. They want you to have understood the Rasa theory well. And this is something that you are required to do when you appear for any exam. Okay? So, if you have studied the Ras theory well and understood it well, you know that Vibhav is what develops into Ras. I'm not going to explain the entire theory here, but I'm surely going to make a video on the Ras theory very soon. Idea of a university, the collected lectures dating from 1852 onwards and published in 1873 by. Now this is something that's very interesting here. You see, you might not know, you might never have heard of this thing called idea of a university, but they want a clever guy to get this option right. Okay, you don't need to know this beforehand. You can guess and I'll tell you how to guess it. You are a student of English literature and you definitely must have heard names like Samuel Johnson and James Joyce and Farah Nuruddin. Okay. So what you got to do is Samuel Johnson, you know, he lived in the 18th century. How can he live in 1852 and publish a book in 1873? Similar with similar is the case with James Joyce. He was a writer who practiced modernism living in the 20th century. How can he be alive in 1852 seems rather problematic and Farah Nuruddin if you've studied African writers and if you know a little about African writers you must be knowing that Farah Nuruddin is still alive so the only option that makes sense here is J John Henry Newman and you can easily get it right but what you got to keep in mind is the fact that you need an overall knowledge of English literature in order to get questions like these right you cannot of course learn everything like the writer of every fucking book you cannot do that sorry for the using the curse word but um, you cannot learn you know get to know the author of every book what you got to keep in mind is that you have to study the concepts the major concepts that you think are going to be asked like the rust theory the concept of stream of consciousness negative capability stuff like that Learn, um, learn and understand all the concepts well because they're going to be questions based not on your learning skills, not on just pure facts, but on your overall knowledge of English literature and moreover the concepts in it. So you can easily figure out this answer by, uh, by a knowledge of the time in which a particular author lived. You must have seen like Samuel Johnson, of course, was alive and uh, was a critic and he used to live in the 1700s and then James Joyce was a modern writer you must be thinking like how can he be alive to publish a book like Ulysses okay in 1922 when he was alive in 1852 as well and Farah is still alive how can he be how can he be alive in 1852 and publish lecture now this is meter language measured usually by the foot into nine lengths of pattern words please identify such measurings given below now this question seems a little hard because not everybody again they want you to understand this concept of meter and they want you to have a knowledge of basically the all the meters and not in this question but i would suggest that you study all these concepts well now it's very simple quantitative meter is of course uh, based on long and short sound okay the length in a certain sense 
this is a long sound this is a short sound that's why it's a quantitative meter not a qualitative meter syllabic is of course dependent on syllables by syllable count accentual is of course dependent on the stress like where are you accentuating a particular word and accentual slash syllabic of course by both stress and syllabic count now all these options are correct so we go for option d all of the above are true it's quite simple if you just focus on the words that are used and as a matter of fact i'm not saying that this is going to be true all of the times but as a matter of fact i've seen that when you have an option like all of the above or none of the above in a b c and d generally either of the two is correct okay i'm not saying that that's correct all the time but most of the times negative capability you have to match the following and it's again a very easy objective correlative imagism simplistic imagination now negative capability everybody knows every student of english literature might have encountered this word john keats objective correlative was used by t s eliot in his essay hamlet and his problems a simplistic imagination is a concept that was developed by samuel taylor coleridge you know how much coleridge wrote on fancy and imagination etc etc and so imagism of course is related to ezra pound so we can match a1 with uh, b2 and so option b becomes right and a2 with b4 a3 with b3 and a4 with b1 now of course let's come to question number 8 it's again match the following and they again want you to understand a particular concept well they are not checking your knowledge of facts which is very interesting and which is something which is very welcome because if they start testing your rote skills then that's going to be a problem for every student out there he is as brave as a lion it's a very basic simile time is a thief now this is a metaphor time is a thief okay a comparison between two unusual things a simple metaphor he is as skinny as a toothpick of course nobody can be as skinny as a toothpick this is a hyperbole and the moon smiled at the stars a personification okay the moon does not have a mouth or a face to smile but they have given it one here and so it's personification so i hope that this video has given you some useful insights into cracking your jnu or any other entrance examination related to english literature i'm going to make a video on the comprehension part as well stay tuned and subscribe to my channel if you have any questions you can ask them below thank you so much guys